Hello, I'm Monica Price and welcome to Cover TV. Today I'm joined by a lady who started in the world of business at the age of 50 and continues to drive forward her business and inspire others. We welcome Jill Barton, Chairperson of GB Training. We also welcome singer-songwriter Doug O'Brien, who has written a new song to celebrate Aston Villa's FA Cup journey. welcome my first guest who is a successful businesswoman, entrepreneur and is passionate about her business after 20 years. We welcome Jill Barton, chairperson at GB Training. Hello Jill, thank you so Hello, much. Monica. Welcome to Cup of TV. Thank you. Wonderful to have you on the show Jill. So you know you started your business, what age were you when you started your business Jill? I was, I was 50. 50, so yeah. some people might think that's quite old to start a business. So what inspired you to do that? Well, I think I was at that age where you're changing as a, as a woman mm. and, uh, and I was ready to, to leave the company that I was with because I was travelling all over the country uh, and thought, no, I'll do something for me. Mm. And that's, what, that's how I started it. I didn't intend to start a business. I intended to work for myself. And, uh, and then I realised that it's better to have other people with you. Mm. Uh, I needed other people around me. Uh, and that's how it started. And I mean, you are an inspiration and continue to be so, be so. But tell us a little bit about GB Training. What do they do? Uh, well, GB Training's, uh, as it says, a training company. Uh, we started off just delivering soft skills and management training, uh, but now we're widely known for our apprentice programs and for functional skills and the mandatory courses. Um, but it's uh, it's looking at ages from 16 to any age. Mm. I think our oldest apprentice is 74 oh, and really? I think they're going to do a feature about <laughs> that um, because uh, you, you're never too, too old no, to learn. Absolutely and I mean people who what viewers that are watching will be inspired by the fact you know to say you started your business you know at, at a mature age some would say I don't yeah. think that's mature but you know some would say that and it's just is it is it important to you to to make sure that women understand that you can start a business at any age? I think if you've got a dream if you've got an idea uh, then you should follow your dreams, whatever that may be. Uh, whether it's a business idea or whether it's something that you want to do as a person, you should always follow that mm. uh, and put everything you've got into it to make it work for you. And you've presumably got a really good team around you. So We've got a fantastic about. team. It started off with family members. I started off with my daughter-in-laws and then my, two of my sons. Uh, the businesses have expanded so that now all of the the sons uh, except and, and wider family um, are within different businesses uh, that we've, we've now got. Uh, so it's using all of their skills and we're a hard working family. Mm. So that's and is it work. important to use the family? Was that something you wanted to do, to have the family involved with the business? Not at the beginning. We all thought that the sons, because we've got five sons, uh, would follow the father mm. into engraving. Um, but it became apparent that, you know, in some way or other, they fitted around mm. what we did. And where it didn't fit, we invested in that, like a building company and then the garage for the eldest son, so that all of the skills in the family mm. were used. And when you're working, I mean, is that as a family, it sometimes can be difficult to, to work as a family, but is it, do you have a smooth ride every day, Jill? Do, 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 do you, you lead the helm, so how I, is it? I think it's, um, it's changed over the years. I think in the early stages, because very much it was my baby, um, I did used to become very defensive if anything wanted to be changed and mm. I think now that's changed. Mm. Um, it's become full circle so that I'm willing now to allow the sons, because they're able to, uh, to lead the way and I just advise, uh, which is, is mm. much better from my point of view mm. because although I'm still fully involved and I still want to make, make it work and still passionate about it, I also like to have our leisure time and it don't go in full time it's just two part days a week yes <laughs> i am on the other end of the phone the rest of the time mm. but it's it's a good work balance mm. and training is that do you feel that's important to the young people to have training for some, it's, it's imperative and it's it's brilliant to see uh, somebody that starts off and, and that they need either the edges smoothed or they need the skills built or the confidence built mm. and the knowledge base expanded mm. uh, to see them into fruition and think 
that's because of us. That's what we've done. And what about being a woman in business, Jill? Do you think it's changed over the years, being a woman in business? I think it's very much changed because I worked for Vast Leisure previously mm -hmm. and there was not one woman on the board, mm -hmm. on either of the boards. Uh, so I think it's, um, it's changing, but I still think it's more difficult for a woman mm -hmm. to make herself known in business, mm -hmm. um, particularly because Birmingham's our diversity the West Midlands, well, the whole country now is, but years ago it was in Birmingham, there was a lot of ethnic groups. And so a woman coming into business was either frowned upon, or I think that helped be more mature, mm. uh, that you could gain the respect. So I would say probably that was an advantage being older. Mm. Whereas if I'd have been a young woman, I may mm. not have been listened to at that time. Yeah. Is it, I mean, it's, it's crazy, isn't it, to think about it, really? But it, what you're saying, it probably viewers that are watching will probably relate to that and think, you know, that, it, that, that is true. And yeah. do you think, how, how difficult would it be then for, you, for someone younger coming into a business who wanted to set up their own business, a younger woman? Do you think there's easier steps now or do you think it's just as difficult? I think it, it possibly now that there's not the funding available mm. to start off. I mean, I had to do a presentation and I think I got the time it was something like four thousand pounds which got my computer and things like yeah. that you know to start off uh, I don't think those grants are available now um, but I think as um, now there's a lot more equality um, I think it is easier now for, for younger people if you've got if you've got the ambition and you've got the drive and you've got the people skills then and your idea your, your business sense does make sense uh, that you've d you've carried out your research and you know it can make money, mm. uh, then you are believable. And mm. I think it, it's about the person. It's about whether the the other person that is helping them along the way, whether it be the bank or somebody else, believes that person can uh, will fulfil what they say they'll mm. fulfil. And it's important to you still because you continue to work and continue to fulfil your dreams. Have you continue, would you see that in the foreseeable future, Jill, to continue just doing what you're I doing? I can't see an end to it. I can <laughs> see less, a little bit less time. Yeah. But I think now and again, I'll Take get, a, day get off. a buzz. I and, and I think, no, I really want to be mm. involved in this bit. Mm. Um, but then some of the things I think, oh no, get on with it, you know, that's <laughs> day to day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so so I, th I think that'll always mm. be in me mm. um, to, to think, oh, this is an idea. I mean, we've, we've gone down some, you know, fancy civil routes, you know, we were going to have a chateau in France and have weddings and things there mm. and spent a lot of time doing the research on that and it didn't mm. pan out. But that's what you do in business. You look at things mm. and if it's not viable, you don't do mm. it. However, that might seem at the time mm. something nice to do. And what, when, you, when you're working, what's been one of your sort of mantras, the things that keeps you going to keep you passionate about what you do? Is there anything that you think of? Is there anything that inspires you? I just think it's about positive thinking. And with, posit with positive thinking, you, you can only change what you're able to change. Uh, uh, with positive influencing, really, that uh, you can influence people around you, but in a positive way. Um, and that is a driver, mm. you know, to see and to see, as I say, other people. Mm. Uh, I ran a women's development uh, programme in the early days oh, with 40 fantastic. women. And that was really nice when at the end of it, some of the women stood up and said, God, I, I was frightened to come through the door mm. and now look at me. Mm. And that's really good. And still keep in touch with quite a few of those mm. women now. It's very uh, humbling, so, I would imagine, if you've, because you've given something back to them, haven't you, really, and given them I think the skills. It's, it's, yes, it's a mm. shared experience, mm. you know, that, um, and, and I didn't realise when I first um, became self-employed and before I started GB training, how important it is, your network, mm. that the people that you meet and, and that are going to be part of what you do. Mm. Uh, and it is, it is really important for anybody, mm. you know, not just a business person, to have a really good network about them mm. for when things go wrong in life so that you've still got that network to pull things together mm. uh, because it's never plain sailing uh, any business we've had our ups and downs yes. over the years uh, and uh, we're still strong now mm. with, the, with the family at the helm and a really good team yeah. behind us and do you go across or work across the uk because obviously you're based in the West Midlands, but do you... Do Not you now. No. 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 We, the company does, sorry. Mm. Yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, we've got an office yeah. in Stoke and yes. the, the company works London yeah. and uh, across, mm. you know, the north, etc. cetera. Um, but uh, we don't go as far as Wales and we don't mm. go as far as Scotland. Mm. Um, it is, you know, 
uh, in the in more the central region. regions. Mm -hmm. And what do you see for the future? I mean, training is, as you said, you think it's really important. How do you see the future of training? I, I think that, um, uh, luckily, the government that we've kept in yes. <laughs> uh, support training. Mm -hmm. So the apprentice programme will still carry on. Mm -hmm. Um, but I see that being wider. I think companies now need to invest more, mm. like they used to. That, that you know, companies don't invest as much in their managers, and they need to for the future. So I think that's probably what I'd like to see mm. before I actually bow out. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> to is see a, that come back again. <laughs> and is there a bow out date? No. 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 no good. No. I've, I've done it very gradually. Yes. It's like four days, then three days, yes. now two days. Yeah. So. Oh, that's great, Jill. Yeah. And, and, when, and when you're um, working now, I mean, people obviously still come to you and, and they respect your advice and respect what you say. Do you, do you like that? Do you still, are you still empowered by that yourself? I like that, but mm. I also think that I've got things to learn up other people as mm. well. I don't think you ever stop learning. back to Cuppa TV. I'm now joined by singer-songwriter Doug O'Brien, who has written songs before for his beloved Aston Villa, and now joins me to talk about his new composition. Welcome, Doug. Thank you so much for joining me on Cuppa TV. Hello, Monica. Thank you for asking me to come in and see you. Very lovely to see you. So, obviously a Villa fan. How long have you been a Villa fan, Doug? I've been a Villa fan since the first time I ever went into the ground, which was in 1968. First ever game, Villa versus Bristol City in the old second division. Mm. Uh, we won the game 1-0. As soon as I got back home, I was a little kid, I was so starry-eyed. I got two jumpers, one red, one blue. I cut the sleeves out of the red one, put the blue one over, sorry, put the, cut the sleeves out of the blue one, uh, put the red one over the top, and I had my first ever Villa kit, and I've been in love with the club ever since. Oh, that's, I mean, and um, fans, I mean, you're obviously devoted to what you do. So that, did that inspire you to write the songs that you've written, Doug? Well, no question about it, because when you're a Villa supporter, you eat, sleep and breathe mm. the whole thing. And I, I write songs anyway, so somewhere along the line, it's going to come out. Um, and obviously that's what I do. Now tell us about what you've written already before we get to your new one. You've done, you've done some songs already, so tell us about those. Yeah, I've written a number of songs in actual fact about Aston Villa Football Club. The very first song I ever wrote was called Rotterdam 82, obviously uh, as a commemorative song for when Villa won the European Cup in 1982. I actually w wrote the song three days before the final on a little Casio keyboard, got the key keyboard out, played a G, played a B minor, played a C, played a D, and I thought, there's a song there, and off I went, and that was it. And um, I wrote the lyrics three days before the final. Then when we won the game, I then obviously wrote further lyrics, uh, and that was it. Um, and Mervyn King, who's the former governor of the Bank of England, mm. uh, he actually selected it as a choice on um, the legendary BBC, um, trying to think of the programme. Uh, it's just a bit Desert of, Island Discs. Yeah, I was going to say, was it yeah, Desert Island Discs? Desert Island Discs. Yeah. And so a lot of Villa fans are obviously familiar with that, and it's been played you know, all around the world. Oh, that's incredible. And yeah. But it's not just Villa songs you write. You've, you, you've been a singer-songwriter for... How long have you been a singer-songwriter, uh, Truthfully, I'd say since 1982, since mm -hmm. Villa won the European Cup, I have written a lot of songs, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, not to do with Villa, but they're more deep, uh, they're more personal. Um, songwriters, they're sort of very introverted. Um, so I've written a lot of songs, but it's Villa more than anything else, mm -hmm. where, you know, I'm actually in the spotlight mm -hmm. for writing songs. Mm -hmm. And now, I mean, they're on their FA Cup journey. So, um, how, how do you? What, what's your feelings about that? Well, to be honest with you, I'm not the best spectator to sit next to. Uh, when, when I'm at the game, I've got a lad called Lloyd who I sit next to, and a girl called Andrea. Andrea, who's absolutely amazing because she's proper Villa supporter. She's like me. Panics. Uh, last time we played against West Ham. Every time the ball came in by the goals, I was jumping about going, quick, Jay, get the ball, get the ball. Mm. And if you went and played the 90 minutes back, what you'll find is it was a really comfortable 1-0 victory. Mm. West Ham were hardly ever in the game. Mm. But when you leave the 90 minutes, you're completely on edge. Mm. So when we're playing Arsenal in a few weeks' time, I'm going to be the most nervous person in the stadium. Bite my fingernails to the elbow. And the thing that worries me more than in Kelsey is we played Arsenal at Villa Park earlier in the season. And they scored three goals in two minutes. The first half of the game, first half an hour, nothing was happening. We were matching them, no problem whatsoever. Then, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Three goals in two minutes. And Friday, I was saying to one of my friends, God, you know, I've in all the years I've been supporting Villa, I've never known anybody score that many goals 
so quickly against us. And then lo and behold, we play Southampton on Saturday. Mm. We crash and burn, and Marnais, fair play to him, scored the, the you know the record hat uh, trick, quickest hat trick ever in the Premier League history. Mm. So you know that worries me. And the defence is fragile. Mm. And maybe Sherwood's got it right in terms of getting Villa to play on the front foot. They always say that um, attack is the best form of defence. And when you've got somebody like Christian Benteke as the target man and the focal point, which is what Sherwood does. That at least gives me the confidence. Mm. And I think if we're going to beat Arsenal, we're going to have to have a real go mm. at them. It's going to be a monumental task. But I said to you, inside the stadium, I'm going to be biting my nails. It's just, so ner <laughs> it's just nerve wracking to me. To be a manager, it all sounds very tactical to me. It sounds great. <laughs> so, what inspired you to write this song, this new song? Which, what's it called? Tell us, tell everybody what it's called. Yeah, the song's called "Loving It at Wembley," mm -hmm. and the inspiration was quite simply the Villa supporters. Mm. When you watch, uh, when you, when Villa are in, involved in massive games, and I always say the light and potential of Aston Villa Football Club. I always say to anybody who listen, Aston Villa is the world's number one football club. I say it, and I absolutely 100% mean it. If you'd have been at Wembley Stadium when we played Liverpool in that semi-final, all around the complex, everywhere you go, I walked all around London, all around the area, and it was Villa fans everywhere. And the, the, the passion was unbelievable. Mm. They were all jumping up and down outside the pubs. Oh, Christian mm. Benteke. So you see that and you think, I've got to tap into that. Mm. And that was the inspiration, um, certainly for certain areas of the song. The, the Christian Benteke line in the song, it, it actually, that's the focal point of the song, if you get me. And it's all the Villa fans jumping up and down. Christian Benteke is Villa's current hero. And every club, it doesn't matter who you support, you always have to have something that you can believe in, mm -hmm. something that you can attach yourself to. And currently at Villa Park, Christian Benteke, he's, he's the he's man. He's the man. He's yeah. the man, <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, the inspiration for the song, if you get me, ultimately, mm -hmm. is the Villa supporters themselves. Um, there's also the, the part of the song which alludes to Mer Sir Mervyn King, Prince William and David Cameron, who I've sent copies to. Again, Aston Villa Football Club, as I said to you earlier about alluding to being the world's number mm -hmm. one football club, the elite of society, they all seem to be Villa supporters, Prime Minister David Cameron, future King of England, uh, Prince William, former Governor of the Bank of England, Sir Mervyn King. Are they all so Villa thought, supporters? All <laughs> Villa supporters, so it's almost as if Villa rule the world. Mm. So if we could win the FA Cup, that would just be you know, the icing okay. on the cake, ultimately. <laughs> Um, so that was, again, was the inspiration for the song. The song is not just a celebration of Villa getting to Wembley, it's also a celebration of our supporters, because I always believe the Villa fans are the best fans mm. in the world. Right, Doug, so let's hear a little bit of this lovely song then. So what's it called? It's called Loving It at Wembley. OK, off you go. Who's making all that noise? Why, it's the Villa boys. We're buzzing at your league. Reward for loyalty. With a who are and the Paul the Bar. Oh, Christian Benteke. The Bella boys are simply loving it at Wembley. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> now, who's singing that? Who's, who's we got to sing that? Well, you can tell there by the way I struggle. Not that I said. Yeah, there's a top A in that song there. Yeah. Which is the O Benteke line, which I've just tried to sing, and you can see I can't get there. <laughs> so, obviously, we've got a professional singer in, mm. a, fella, a lovely fella called Dave. Taylor, mm -hmm. David Taylor, uh, he auditioned for The Voice, he would have gone a long way in that, there's no question about it, mm. but his manager says, I don't want you to uh, progress okay. that, please, so he's sort of pulled him out of it on the quiet, uh, so David Taylor, he lives in um, Great Bar, and I say he's an absolutely fantastic vocalist, um, oh, also I managed to employ a, a lovely guy called Ben Drummond, mm -hmm. who is a local musician, and he's, uh, any, anybody who knows the, the Birmingham scene, and obviously um, my manager, Barry Tomes, He's completely au fait with the scene. Ben Drummond is one of the most gifted musicians in Birmingham, in the, in the music industry. Uh, and I got him into the recording studio, and credit to him, um, most of the song and what you hear, Ben's influence is in there. I've showed Ben exactly what it is that I want, the heavy bass, the chop on the rhythm guitar. We've sat down in the recording studio with Chris Moore, one of the producers. Mm. Um, so all these people who've been involved in the project, you know, they all need the accolades as well. Mm. Yes, I'm at the front and I'm doing what I'm doing now, that's great. But these guys, you know, they need the, their round of applause, yeah, applause as well. As well. Yeah. And is this song available now, Doug? Can people the get the song? Yeah, the song is available on iTunes. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it's also available on YouTube. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you might even know a little clip. Yeah. To everybody. <laughs> but yeah, it is available on iTunes. Mm. Um, Loving It at Wembley, David Taylor, and we've got two versions. When I was in the recording studio, uh, you'll probably know yourself, Monica, when you're in recording studios for a long time, mm. your brain becomes fatigued and you can listen to a track and listen to it and listen to it. And the more you listen to it, you think there's something missing. Um, so I had a moment of inspiration. I said to Chris Moore, the produ uh, producer, 
it needs some strings. So we sat down and we put on a strings arrangement in it. And I thought, yeah, that sounds wonderful now. That was on the Friday. On the Monday, it came back and had a fresh listen, and it's what you call fresh ears. Mm. I listened to it and I thought, it don't need the strings. It was okay as it was. But fans I've spoken to and other people in the industry, they say, no, it does sound better with the strings. But personally, you know, I'm saying no, the, mm. the proper version is without the strings. But what we did as a compromise, we released it on iTunes. Um, Loving It at Wembley with Strings by David Taylor. Mm -hmm. Loving It at Wembley without Strings, David Taylor. Mm -hmm. So you've got two choices. You've got two choices of yeah. music. And what's your hopes for the song, Doug? To be honest with you, my hopes for the song, um, it's more to do with my hopes for Villa. All I really want, truthfully, is I want Villa to win the FA Cup. Mm -hmm. That's all I really mm -hmm. want. If Villa win the FA Cup, then the song will take care of itself. Mm -hmm. But truthfully, you know, I just want to win the FA Cup. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Well, Doug, it's been lovely to see you. We're going to play the clip now, the YouTube clip. So, um, just it's been great for you to come on the show. So, thanks so much. Thank you thank again you. for inviting me on, Monica. Thank you. thank you ever so much. That's it for today. I'd like to thank Jill and Doug for joining me and thank you for watching. Please do get in touch with the show either by email or you can join us on Facebook or Twitter at Big Centre TV. Come back and see us again soon. Bye bye. Come on, you feel the boys. Come on, you Come on, you feel the boys. Come on, you feel the boys. With the ooh.